landscape painting. We're going to start with this image. You can download it straight from my website and I'm going to show you how to make this. How to get this painting from the photograph so you can do it yourself at home. On the website I've got a list of all the colours you need, the brushes that I use, but this video is just how to get started, get your drawing laid out, so you can create a lovely landscape with this to hang on your wall at home. So step one in starting this landscape painting is to block out your canvas to put a colour ground onto it so that you can work your paintings on top. I've already done that here and you can watch a how to do it video on my how to apply a colour ground for acrylic painting video. Okay, the second step is to draw out the basic shapes that we've got here. We're just after the line drawing. I'm using um, a 3B pencil here, which can be easily erased. It won't smudge too much, yet it's dark enough to make a mark. See how it's fairly easily it makes a mark onto the canvas without feeling that you have to really press it into it, you know, and, and, and dent the canvas. So a quick tip to make sure you get, you know, a nice horizontal is just to use a piece of scrap paper and you, you line up this edge to the edge of your canvas. So it's like a, a, a set square, really. So there, line that up. So step two is to assess the tones that we've got in the picture to see where to start and where are the lightest and dark areas. So the first thing to do is to squint your eyes at this picture. Are they squinted? Half close them just so everything slightly blurs a bit. What you'll find this does is it makes the darks look darker, the lights look lighter and all these what are called half tones kind of disappear, what you really get to is the basic structure of the picture and that's what we're interested in. So for this, the darkest area is this area here of the land, so that's what I'm going to painting to start with, with the burnt umber. All the information on the brushes that I use and how to choose a brush for acrylic painting is on my other video or a list of materials is on my website. So notice how when I'm painting, I'm resting onto the, onto the canvas, which helps you give leverage and support. So you can, with the finer lines, uh, it's a lot easier to get a, a straighter line than if you're hovering your hand in the air, trying to balance it. So once I've got um, that in, I'm now going to swap to this brush to, to block in that area. The paint that I've got on here, because acrylics dry so quickly, you want to make sure you get that off, otherwise it will go solid on your brush and you won't be able to use it. So I'll dip it into some water and then you know, rub it into uh, the kitchen roll, get through loads of kitchen roll with acrylic. And then just squeeze it at the end and you see how if I put that on there no nothing comes out it's you know completely clear that's just with you know plain water it's always better to have more water and change it regularly than use the same pot it get mucky and then what will happen is that all that dirt in your water pot will come into your colors when you're mixing and you won't get a nice clean color even though we're using brown, it's still good to keep it clean. It's good professional working habits. Okay, so now with the uh, filbert brush. Okay, as simple as that. I often paint around the edge for my painting, so I'll paint around here. And you notice how I haven't been too heavy handed. You can still see some of this underground glowing through, and that's really nice. And I've you know, left little bits where I'm not being completely solid because I want a bit of texture, a bit of movement in, in this area. So that's all I do for this particular painting with the burnt umber. 
Now I'll put in some of the highest highlights, the brightest area, which are going to be, when we look at the picture, they're going to be, you know, these area here where the sun is, you know, shining through. So this I'm just going to use titanium white. So now with the titanium white, I'm just going to again block in the very brightest areas. See how I'm keeping it quite loose and you know quite watery. You notice if you're not using um, an artist quality titanium white, it won't be as thick as this. It'll be a lot more translucent and you might have to use a couple of layers. Um, when you're first starting with acrylics, I always advise buying the best quality paints you can afford. If you can't afford to go artist quality of everything, definitely try and invest in an artist quality white because it will have so much more opacity. It will be able to you see how it's covered over the color underneath very easily. This will be really, really beneficial in your future paintings. There's a slight bit of lightness down here, but not as strong as the others. So I'll just dilute it with a bit of water. And then just scrub it in with my finger. So now we've got the lights and the darks. Now we can go back to uh, the colors that we were mixing before to start art school. This is part four, the final part in this free acrylic painting landscape course. I'm just going to add some ultramarine blue and some alizarin crimson to get started. So this pink here is just a mix between the white and the crimson. That's all it is. Just start with the white, add a tiny amount of the crimson. You don't need much at all to get this nice bright pink. blend that edge to keep it a bit softer again some of this color some of the blue color that we had for the sea and you know you can just you know break it up I said for the sea I use the one for the sky but mistakes happen when you're painting so I'm just lightening this with the white and this areas here I can just you know add a touch to so with the bright pink it's nice that isn't it And see how I can work side to side you know, just to feather that edge from it. I 
and then now tone down that uh, pink a bit with this other blue that we've already pre-mixed and you notice you know on this side of the of the picture there's a little bit of it here and a little bit of that color down there you can see that down there So now just with some more of the blue onto the premix sky colour. Might add a little bit to that corner. So now when we have another look at the picture, we'll see how the burnt umber that we first put in here um, is too warm and not dark enough. So we can just mix a black between using the burnt umber, add some of that blue to it, the ultramarine blue, and you see how that gives us you know, a lovely dark black. we can start to just put in especially on this the base of the land you don't need to worry too much about the top I quite like having part of it there and then with the white on here I'm just going to add a little highlight and I use quite a dry brush so it breaks on the texture of the canvas surface. A really lovely painterly approach and sometimes this is just what you're after. You know, a real feeling of the brush marks, the movement. You can of course work more into a painting to make it more realistic but sometimes these just work absolutely, at real cracking little paintings. What I'd now do to bring it to a better finish is I'd start to introduce glazes in different colours and just to work on the whole thing um, just a bit more. This is Will Kemp from Will Kemp Art School. If you want to paint along with this, you can go to my website. There's a link to a download to this picture and all the steps that I've gone through on here so you can follow along at home. I'd love to see your results. Um, 